This is our background builder mini lesson on biochemistry. So for this background builder, we're gonna be using the note sheet that looks like this. Now, this sheet is usually put into your notebook at the beginning of the unit. And even though it says vocabulary of background builder, um, it doesn't always mean it's gonna be always vocabulary words. You'll be filling out the, uh, the sheet according to the, uh, the definitions at the top. Uh, the first column is going to be where you put the term, uh, where you write the term in the box, circle the number down below that represents your, uh, your current understanding. Um, this is just a way of getting you to think about what you know uh, about the term already uh, from number one, uh, circling one, never seen this term before, to number four, I can explain the meaning to another individual. Uh, this just helps us understand where you began, um, be honest about the rating. And uh, sometimes uh, you'll circle a four and you'll find out that you were, weren't correct. And that's actually a good way of learning as well. So you'll write the term in the box. You'll circle uh, one of the numbers that represent your current understanding. You'll go through the video and you will, uh, you'll hear about what the word is about. You'll write that down here in the, the sp space for definition. And then this last box um, is for extra practice. And you can see there's some choices that you get to uh, use for that extra practice. Uh, it's highly encouraged that you uh, use it in a sentence or draw a picture, give examples. Oh, there's some other things you can do there as well. Sometimes uh, your teacher will also assign that to you. Uh, but if they don't assign it to you, feel free to use what um, seems to work the best for you. The first word we're going to be adding to our background builder notes for this unit is the word biochemistry. Biochemistry is a, a field of study within biology where they study chemicals and chemical processes that are related to living organisms. You will see this being a common thread throughout the course of biology. It's un, uh, important to understand what biochemistry is. The next term that you will be adding to your sheet is atom. You can see the picture of the atom here uh, is something you've been familiar with probably for a long time. Uh, an atom by definition is the basic unit of matter. It is made up of a central nucleus, made up of protons and neutrons. You can see that those are the blue and red circles there, surrounded by a bunch of electrons that uh, orbit that nucleus. Uh, the protons being positive, neutrons being neutral, and the electrons being negative. Okay, the next word is element. An element actually goes with the last term, which was atom. An uh, element is just a pure substance that consists of one kind of atom. So one type of atom uh, is what this substance is made of. Um, you'll recognize these names uh, because you learn about them in ninth grade science. Uh, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, helium, boron. These, these are substances made up of, up of just one kind of atom. Uh, we find them on the periodic table. Uh, they're uh, accounted for and they're unique. So uh, right along uh, with the terms atom and element, uh, we get the term bond. And a bond is simply put, is just a, a way atoms are stuck together. And we're gonna talk uh, about a few different ways that atoms are stuck together and different ways that we do bonding. Uh, you will hear that a lot of the times we need energy to create these bonds. So essentially, uh, bonds store chemical energy. One of those types of bonds we do talk about is an ionic bond. An ionic bond is a type of chemical attachment of one or more charged atoms. Charged, you say. How do atoms become charged? Uh, ch atoms become charged when they either lose or gain electrons. If they gain electrons, they become negative. If they lose electrons, they become positive. Now, ionic bonds are formed when those opposites, negatives and positives, or norths and souths, come together. Much like when you put the opposite ends of a magnet close together, they want to stick together. That's how an ionic bond is formed. Uh, an example that you'd be familiar with might be sodium chloride or what we call table salt. It is an, uh, a molecule that is created via ionic bonding. Now, a covalent bond takes two atoms and, and attaches them together as well. However, they do it a little differently than ionic bonds do. A covalent bond is a type of chemical attachment of one or more atoms by this time sharing electrons. 
This is a very common form of, of bonding amongst uh, biochemicals because it is the strongest type of bond. When we share electrons, we get this real strong bonding. You'll be really familiar with covalent bonds. It takes lots of energy to, uh, to build them, so it's a good way of storing energy for living things. An example of a molecule that uses covalent bonding will be sugar, or C6H12O6. Now, what we get from all this bonding is a molecule. A molecule is an electrically neutral group of two or more atoms joined by chemical bonds. Pretty simple. Um, some examples you'll run into in biology, um, oxygen, which is O2, it's two oxygens hooked together uh, by a bond. Uh, we mentioned uh, NaCl, which is our salt or sodium chloride, NaOH or nitrogen. Oftentimes, instead of molecule, we might use the word compound. And a compound technically is a little different than molecules. Um, however, you should know that compound is a pure substance made up of two or more different elements in specific ratios with a specific shape and a specific function um, that can still be chemically separated. That sounds complicated. Um, this might be two or more molecules joined or, or atoms from two or more different elements. Uh, some examples, and they'll look similar to molecules. Um, so we use these kind of synonymously. Um, H2O, uh, NaCl, NaHCO3, C6H12O6 are all examples of compounds where we have a pure substance made up of two or more different elements in specific ratios. The next term is macromolecule, uh, and if you go back to your common word parts, you'll see macro is a, a common prefix, macro meaning big, and you've learned what a molecule is, so we should be able to, to make some guesses at what a macromolecule is. It is a large molecule formed uh, from joining or bonding other molecules together, usually some sort of building blocks. Some examples that you will learn about in biology um, are protein, carbohydrates, DNA, uh, lipids, etc., etc. There's lots of examples of macromolecules. Organic. Um, organic has lots of different meanings you know, on different levels. Um, you have to know that we're going to use it in biology and in biochemistry as a way of describing carbon-based molecules that make up living material. Um, and even though water isn't carbon-based, it is also a part of these molecules. So um, that's what organic means. Monomer, uh, again, a word that has um, a prefix in it, mono meaning one, uh, refers to smaller molecules that are joined together over and over again to produce a larger molecule, which we're going to refer to as a ma macromolecule. Um, in macromolecules definition, you, would, you heard the term building blocks. Um, monomers are those building blocks. Some examples that we will use in biology, amino acids, glucose, nucleotides are all types of uh, monomers that we use to build bigger um, molecules called macromolecules. I'm going to slide in a picture here. I'm going to move it up to the top of the screen. Um, you'll see monomers as being our individual building blocks. When we click them together, um, we're going to get a word called polymer, which we'll deal with later on. And when we get lots of, lots of them put together, we have these big, long um, polymers or that we're going to call macromolecules. Again, um, you saw a polymer with monomer, uh, poly meaning many. In this case, uh, it's a macromolecule formed by joining lots of these monomers or building blocks together. Um, you'll hear some examples throughout biology. The one I'm going to give you today is proteins. Amino acids are the monomers that build this big polymer called a protein. And this is what it would look like as we look at a picture of it. You see all the little individual building blocks making this big, huge molecule called a protein. So now that we have all the chemistry pieces down, uh, you should understand uh, some specific things that you will hear when we talk about uh, photosynthesis and respiration. One will be uh, something called a chemical reaction. You should be, uh, be able to identify this as being the interaction of two or more elements or compounds or molecules that results in the formation of new elements, compounds, molecules with different identities than the original ones. That's what a chemical reaction is. Um, an example of a chemical reaction might be the burning of methane. 
Okay. So that's a pretty simple chemical reaction. And it looks like this. If you look at it, here's the chemical reaction. CH4 is our methane. We add a little bit of oxygen and it reacts to give us some new products. Notice that none of these none of these are the same as the beginning ones. So CO2 plus H2O. And there's some fun little uh, diagrams of those molecules as well. So uh, we have chemical equation, uh, which relates back to chemical reaction. A chemical equation is just a written representation of a chemical reaction. Um, an example would be the equation for photosynthesis, which looks like this. Um, we used actually a chemical equation to represent the um, example for chemical reaction, which is, um, again, it's, it's tough to separate these two uh, because one represents the other. Uh, here's the equation for photosynthesis, and you'll have to know that uh, for your uh, assessment anyway, so it'd be a good time to get introduced to that. So this next word is reactant, and reactant is a substance that is involved in the start of a chemical reaction. It's usually found on the left side of the arrow. Now I'm moving this up at the up at the top of the screen because there's a lot of examples that you'll want to be able to see. So for example, um, here is a chemical equation, just as we've learned about. Um, in this case, it's ammonia um, being added to hydrochloric acid to give us ammonium chloride. The chemicals that are at the start, or the substances that are at the start of the um, reaction are what we call the reactants. They get to react together to give me something brand new. In this case, the reactants are ammonia and hydro, um, hydrochloric acid. Here's another an example of another ex um, equation that or reaction that happens here again these are reacting to create something brand new and here is our photosynthetic reaction um, here's our reactants over here carbon dioxide water and some energy to give us um, some brand new things and the last term for this biochemistry background builder is the word product uh, product as you saw on the previous screen so you'll see some of the same images is the substance that is created or made during a chemical reaction. So now we have two things that um, react together, which are our reactants, and they create a new product. Uh, the product is usually found on the right side of the arrow. So for example, we have our equation from before. I should make that a little bit bigger. Here's a reactant, ammonia and hydrochloric acid. They give us a brand new thing called ammonium, chlor ammonium chloride, which is our new product. Let's slide that off to the side. Again, you can see another example here uh, where we have two reactants giving us a new product. And of course, here's our photosynthesis, photosynthesis reaction um, with our carbon dioxide water as our reactants giving us new products, uh, this, in this case, glucose and oxygen.